Hello, in this video I want to do some matrix encryption, but this time with a 3x3 key. The whole process is exactly the same as with a 2x2 encryption key for matrices, um, but we'll just see the subtle difference when you have a 3x3 for your key. And of course having a bigger matrix, a 3x3, will make it a little bit harder to crack, a little bit more toughly encrypted for your message. So with the encryption, I already have the key I'm going to use. It's that 3x3 three three matrix. Um, it has an inverse because that's essential. Whenever you choose your key, you've got to be sure that you can find an inverse matrix for it. Okay, and so I have that for this one. So then I can go and a message I'm going to try and encrypt is the plan is ready. So I convert each letter into the number. So let's go through that. T is 19 h is 7, e is 4, 15, 11, 0. So I'm letting a equal 0 to start it off, uh, which would mean z is 25, 18, 17. And then because I am using a 3x3 three three key, the message matrix that I put my message numbers into, it has to have three rows and any number of columns, okay? Just to make sure the matrix multiplication works. I'm gonna make this a little bigger. It has to have three rows, okay? So that we can actually perform that multiplication. But then how many columns? So I'm gonna this time fill my numbers going column by column. So I'm gonna go 19, seven, four, and then 15, 11, zero, 13, Eight, and I'm going to keep going until I use up my numbers, and we'll see what we have. 4, 0, 3, 24. Now notice there is this one blank spot still in my matrix. So I can't just leave nothing there, but I have to fill it in. And you should already have an agreed upon number that corresponds to a space in your code. We'll say a space is the number 26. So I put a 26 to fill it in. So any blank spaces left in my matrix, I'm going to fill in with a 26. And this gives me a 3 by 5 matrix. So this time I filled it by column because that was kind of easier to just go through column by column by column and fill in the blank spots with 26. If I wanted, I could fill it by rows just the same. It just requires some planning ahead. I would take that number 14, which is how many letters I have, and I'd think, that is closest to what number divisible by 3? 15. So if I had 15 numbers, I would divide by 3, which means I have 5 columns. See, you'd have to do a little planning ahead, but if I just go through and fill it by columns, I don't really have to think. I just fill in, and then any blank spots I have left over, put in a 26. I've set up my message matrix now. So I have my key and my message matrix, and I'm going to multiply them together and that will create a 3 by 5 matrix for me and then we just have matrix multiplication so to start off I would take first row times first column so I go with 7 times 19 which is 133 plus 2 times 7 which is 14 and 1 times 4 which is 4 and then so this is tough multiplication which you can see how it adds to making this harder to decrypt I take first row times, we'll go second column. So I have to go 7 times 15, which is 105, plus 2 times 11, which is 22, and then 1 times 0, which is 0. And we go through like that for every slot in there. So I'm going to go through and perform that multiplication. You can do it by yourself, and we'll check in once I get that multiplied. Okay, great. So I have found my numbers after multiply them. And this gives me the encrypted matrix. So we have the key times the message matrix gives the encrypted matrix. So you would send that off to your recipient, the encrypted one, um, and then they would already have access to the key. They would already have access to this matrix somehow. And they would then receive your encoded message matrix and they would have to decrypt it. And they would decrypt it by multiplying by the k inverse because if you think about our equation on the left side here those will cancel out giving me the message matrix is equal to k inverse times e so our next step is to take our key and find the inverse of it 
So it's a three by three, so it requires some mathematical work. I have gone ahead and already found the inverse of it. Voila! So I did some moving around to get the key inverse to fit. And now I take my key inverse. And so I did just use a online inverse calculator to figure that out real quick. And I would multiply this by my encrypted matrix. And once I perform that multiplication, it is going to return me the original message matrix decrypted. So then we will multiply our K inverse times the encoded matrix. And what do we get? Well, we'll get that three by five message matrix. And we're going to take first row times first column to start off. So you have negative two times 151 gives you negative 302 plus eight times 17, which is 136. And then you have negative five times negative 37, which gives 185. You add those together, what do you get? Well, you get 19. And then I could go ahead and I could figure out what is first row times second column. I perform that operation and I would get 15. And I would get 13 on the next column, and then 17, and then three. And so you get the picture. Doing all these calculations correctly, I would return my original message matrix, and that I would then flip into letters so that I can make sense of it. But when I write my sentence, I'm going column by column, so I'm going down like this, down like this, so that's the order I'm putting my letters, and it would return me the message, the plan is ready. So a similar process with a three by three encryption key, you're gonna find a three by three matrix that has an inverse. You will take your message, put it into numbers and put it into a matrix. Easiest way to put in a matrix is fill it by columns like this. Multiply the key times the message. Send the encrypted message to your recipient. They will find the key inverse and go key inverse times the encrypted matrix to get the original message.